And John, whereabouts did you train for your military service? Well, uh, the first three months I spent in Cambridge Racecourse. And there were six men in a bell tent. And the conditions were reasonably good. We had lectures there, we had route marches, we had uh, instruction on, on uh, uh, firearms and we went on the firing range and down on the golf course and we had route marches and general fitness training and so forth, running around the race course and so forth. If you went, didn't pay attention in a lecture, you had to run twice around the race course and then come back and sit down and puff your, what do you call it? And the meals were reasonably good. We, uh, no, it wasn't a bad life. And then from there, uh, I went to Narawa here. And uh, that was when the, the Japanese actually came into the war. And we were called, put into Narawa here. There was uh, light armoured fighting vehicles, which are small tanks, and uh, artillery in Narawa here. Then one weekend, a lot of them had gone out and leave, and all of a sudden there was a, uh, a bugle call, we all had to fall in, and we were instru- told the Japs had landed in North Auckland. And they issued it all with 50 rounds of ammunition. We had bandoliers across here to carry ammunition in. And uh, the ammunition came in big cartons, and they ripped these open, and the, each 10 rounds is wrapped in paper. and we. They told us we had to be quick about this and we just ripped the paper off and threw it down and stuck these things in our bandoliers and anyhow, we all leave, uh, all people in leave had to come back. They stopped all photo, uh, all the telephones and police were bringing soldiers back from Hamilton and so forth. And, uh, mad rush, tiled us all in, a, in, a, in the back of trucks and we were heading for North Auckland. I think we got as far as Huntley and uh, the whole thing was called off as a, a false alarm. So all we had to do, then we had to come back and pick up all the paper which ripped off these lemon <laughs> cartridge cases. It would blown everywhere. It would do too. Mm. But uh, in Narawa here we were in tents again and our tent was right on the railway line. Our guy ropes were tied onto the, onto the boundary fence to the railway. And there used to be uh, two expresses and one limited train go down at night, and it used to come down that straight. And the first few nights, oh, it scared the living daylights out of you. It just shook the ground, and you were sleeping on the ground, and it just shook the ground as it came down the straight, on the hop was straight there. But after a week or two, you never even noticed it. Of course, there was freight trains going through all the time. And, mm-hmm. and so, did you want to go on to the rest of the place? I went from there to Pukakoi. From Pukekoe we went to Walkworth, from Walkworth we went to Mangataperi, from Mangataperi I went back to Pukekoe, uh, from Pukekoe I went to, uh, to uh, Te Tiaroa, and then I was in Papakura for a while. Uh, in between all these times I'd done courses on on uh, mechanics and, and uh, also for a storage, uh, for a storeman's job, for taking out uh, mechanical things for cars and motorbikes and so forth at Waiuru. So uh, I must have spent four or five uh, fortnight working down in Waiuru getting taught these things. One of the things we had to do, they pulled a, a, an old truck to pieces. It was just a chassis and a, a seat on it. And they threw all the engine and tyres and and so forth, and uh, all that could take the pieces and throw them around the room. And four, you had to sit down and put it together. And, and you had three days to do it. And then you had the pleasure, you could drive around the camp for the, once you got it together and uh, for the whole day, and nobody would say anything to you. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness, they certainly moved you around a lot and did very extensive training. Mary, what were some of the things that you were doing during those years while John was training? Well, actually, um, my thing, seeing my brothers were in camp, Mum had to, to milk, 
And so I used to um, get the breakfast and get the children off to school, so because mum was, had the milk all the time. And uh, so, and also we used to, did, did sort of bit of, a bit of war service. We um, had, went to WW, what the Women's War Service, and we used to go and uh, and make um, what do you call it camouflage camouflage nets and different things like that. And also we would go and prepare meals for some of the um, home, what, guard. Uh, home guard and prepare meals for them and uh, serve them meals mm. in the home guard. But apart from that, well, things went on slowly. Mm. Well, things were certainly busy then for you too, by the sound of it. And John, can you tell us a little bit about where you did go when you went overseas and what are some of the things you had to do? Well, we left uh, New Zealand on we were supposed to sail on the 13th of Wellington, but the crew wouldn't sail. We, so we went out of the Wellington Harbour, dropped anchor, and a minute after midnight, they lit the anchor and sailed. The superstitious, they wouldn't. They were lack of crew. And we sailed from there to Tasmania, and uh, we, we had two days in Mostly to get water, because there's 5,000 on board the Multan, and water was rationed to one bottle a day and you had to shave and everything and that that's all you had to, to drink and so one army bottle a day and after that we got on water we went to uh, across the australian bight and we were escorted by the an old australian cruiser in sydney and we struck a storm and the the Sydney bent a beam and we had to wait for her because we had, we had to be escorted. Our flat out speed was 13 knots and she couldn't even do that. So we were only supposed to stay one day in Perth and Fremantle and take on water again. But we didn't have a, uh, we didn't have a, an escort. So we, we got three days in Perth and had a good time there. The Aussies were good to us and brought us into town and in some, uh, from uh, Fremantle into town and gave us a good time. And then we sailed from Perth and we had a, a, a nice new British uh, dest uh, destroyer there, the Sussex. And she was marvellous to look at. She had a mild tons of speed and we went to Bombay to get more water. So uh, we, we we weren't allowed off the boat at Bombay. Nobody's allowed off the boat, but the boat uh, laid the barges out and filled up the pretty calls with water. And then we set sail again and through the Indian Ocean. Two days out, all of a sudden the Sussex started sending signals and make less smoke, make less smoke. And then we found out that there was a, a light boat with four people on it. And we had to keep on. Uh, trip ships never stops, even to be full of a boat. Nobody stops for you. They can't stop. So she was cutting triangles round. And she was like a, a speedboat, the way she stood up. And anyhow, we had just sailed on, and we saw her stop, picked up these jokers. I think three of them were, no, two of them were dead, and the other one died the next morning. One survived. So we, we heard through the bush telling her. But... All the time, she while she stopped, she just stopped for a second, and she took off for about a thousand a year, and it was a marvelous sight to see. And uh, anyhow, some, she took us about three quarters of the way across the Indian Ocean. And then we were met by a little wee uh, Dutch boat. It, uh, it was a, a minesweeper, and it took us from there uh, to, uh, to the port of Aden, where we got more water. And from there we went to uh, up the Red Sea and landed at Tufik. And we disembarked there. By that time I had the flu. I'd been put on duty to cut things from the deep freeze up to the cookhouse. And going from hot to cold, I got the flu. And I was in the hospital for about three days before we landed there, which was cradled out and so forth because lots of sickness on board and diarrhea and all this sort of thing 
One day I complained to the, the doctor that he, he was constipated, and the doctor said, you're a lucky man. He can, uh, the longest known constipation is 42 days. So, <laughs> so uh, he didn't get much sympathy there. But then we had to get down. We had two large kid bikes. We had a, 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 a pack on our back. We had a rifle. And we had to climb down over the side of the on nets onto a landing barge, which took us in an end to the end of Tufik, where we were loaded onto a train and carted, I think it was about 10 hours to Marty Camp.